Hello and welcome to Memoristical. It has been a very long time since I created some content for this channel, but I'm really excited to be back and I'm excited to start this next series of videos. And I hope that you guys will all find it really interesting as well. So, as you may know, I do consulting for various companies and I work on projects for them. And I've always wanted to try to share what I do with my audience to sort of show how I approach a problem, how I get the data, how I model it, how I think through problems. But I'm generally not able to do this, right, because companies don't want me sharing their data publicly. They don't want me talking about their problems publicly. So I decided to do this instead for a side project of mine, which I've always been interested in, which is trying to predict the outcomes of baseball games. Now, baseball is great because there's a ton of data on it, and uh, there's lots of situations which really make it very amenable to probabilistic analysis. So we are going to do this in the next series of videos. We are going to get some data. We're going to wrangle it into shape. We're going to build a model to predict the outcomes of games. And then we're going to do lots and lots of steps to gradually improve the model. And eventually we're going to compare it and see if we can actually predict our, our predict these baseball games better than the Vegas odds makers. So uh, we'll actually, this is for entertainment purposes only, and we're actually going to see it's, it's quite difficult to do better than the Vegas odds makers. But uh, we're going to, we're going to do our best and we're going to do an analysis and I think it'll be really, really interesting. So, uh, so let's get started. This first video, we're going to get some data. We're going to wrangle it and start with a few basic features and wrangle into shape so that we have our features and our target in a proper form and that we can begin modeling. Um, before we jump into it though, I'd really like to ask you if you could please uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I know it's annoying to always be asked that, but it's really helpful to me if you can do that. So if you have a moment and can do that right now, that'd be great. And let's get into it. So first thing we have to do is find some data. And luckily there's this great site called RetroSheet where they have compiled a ton of data. So you can go over here to RetroSheet.org, go to their site map, and they have, we're gonna to focus today on the game logs. So here, they have basically every baseball game played since 1871. And they have it organized in CSV files, one per year. Down here, you can also uh, download in zip files, uh, multiple files at once, so like 10 or 20 years at a time. Uh, one thing I wanna point out is uh, Here's the notice about the use of data in RetroSheet. And they more or less say you can do whatever you want. They just want you to give them credit. And the credit that they want is, is right here. The information used here is obtained free of charge. It's copyrighted by RetroSheet. Interested parties may contact RetroSheet at www.retrosheet.org. So I just want to say that, give them credit. Uh, they've, they've created a, an incredible resource here. And uh, I really want to thank them for doing that. So. What are we gonna do? Let, let's, let's take a look at one of these files. So if you clicked on one of these buttons, it will download a zip file, which you can then extract a single CSV file. And let's look what one of those CSV files looks like. So I'm gonna go here to my notebook and open up one of these CSV files. And you're gonna see that uh, we've got all this information about the game. Now, right now, it's a little difficult to uh, understand that because we don't know what these columns mean. You could probably guess some of them from context. But fortunately, if you go back over here, they've got a guide and they walk through every single field and what it means. Um, so I'll save you the trouble because I've compiled it myself and, and made descriptive column names. So I'm gonna just grab those right now. So I'm going to copy this from another notebook I have and move that over here. Um, I'll get rid of this for right now. Um, so we create the column uh, vector of column names and we're going to say df.columns equals column names. And then we're going to look at ds. Let's look at like 10 rows of this. 10 randomly chosen rows. So you see, each row is a game. We've got the date of the game. We've got a code as to whether it was a part of a double header. So there might be two games on the same day between the same teams. So you gotta be careful about that. 
So if there is this double header code, it'll be one or two, signifying which game of the double header it is. Got the day when it was played. The two teams that were playing underscore V indicates that it's the visiting team, and underscore H indicates that it's the home team. So in this case, it was the Seattle Mariners versus the Boston Red Sox. Um, this was the 41st game of the year for the Mariners, for the visitor team. It was the 40th game of the year for the Red Sox. You see the Red Sox scored six runs and the Mariners scored five, so Boston won this game. And you see we just have lots and lots of information, whether it's a day game or a night game, uh, what ballpark it was played in, the attendance, how long it took. You can see how the runs came uh, per inning. And then we have all the sort of basic statistics of what happened in the game, how many at-bats there were for the visiting team, how many hits they got, doubles, homers, runs batted in, hit by pitch, all this kind of stuff. So you have that for the visiting team, and then you have for the home team. And then even goes further, you have the umpires, you've got uh, the managers, You've got they have the winning and losing pitchers, the pitch, the save if there was one, um, the starting pitchers, and then the lineups, the starting lineups for each team. So you really have a, a very, very, very detailed uh, account of the game. So this is really going to be a lot to work with. But the challenge is going to be it, it, it's not very easy to work with right now in terms of trying to predict the outcome given what they've given us. We're going to have to do a lot of wrangling to to put these, to turn these this raw data into usable features. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put together multiple seasons of data to, to start building our model with. So I'm going to start with just from 1980 on. I mean, you could even go all the way back to 1871 if you wanted. But I'm going to start with just up to 1980. And so I'm just going to very simply start with a, start with a blank data frame, iterate through the years, starting with 1980 up to but not including 2023. Grab the file. The files all have this format. Read it in give it the column names, um, add a column for season, and then concatenate them together. So let's run that, let it go. So this will take a few seconds. Okay, so now let's, let's look at what we've got here. We've got uh, 96,000 games uh, since 1980. And uh, what else can we do? Let's look at our columns. And I'm going to max calls. We have a lot of columns, so i got to do this to make sure it gives me all the information. So you can see all these columns. And you see mostly, uh, you know, mostly there are very few nulls in most of these columns. So that's generally good. Um, so everything kind of looks looks clean and kosher from a cursory glance. Um, now I want, I'm going to add, now that I've got all these games, I want to add a few more crucial sort of columns overall. And I'm going to grab these out from over here. So um, I'm going to create a column for the run differential. So how many more runs did the home team score than the visitor team? create, this will be our key outcome, home victory. So did the home team win or not? And that will just say by if the run differential was more than zero, then the home team won. And I like to cast as an integer to just have ones and zeros. We'll also have the, the run total, so the total number of runs for that game. Um, that's also something actually you can you can gamble on in Las Vegas, is they call it the over-under, how many total runs are scored in that game. And then one other small thing we just called date double header, which is just a, a way to kind of come up with an indicator of a game. If you just look at the date, it's not enough uh, between two teams because of this double header issue. So we concatenate the, the date with a code for the double header. So good. So we got that. Now let's just poke around a little bit. So so the first, one thing I always like to do is just look at um, 
look at our outcome and just understand what's the baseline. So we would expect the home team um, usually wins, but it's not clear by how much. And here we say, okay, the home team wins 53.8% of the time. So in all these games, that, that kind of makes sense. You know, there's a slight advantage for the home team. But, you know, if you follow baseball, you know that um, more so than other sports, teams tend to be evenly matched. On any given day, it's not surprising if any particular team wins. And, and uh, you know, if a team wins 60% of their games, that's a very good season. If they win 66% of their teams, that, of their games, that's considered, you know, quite an amazing season. So, uh so overall, home home victory gives you a little bit of an edge, but not too much. Okay, so what's our what's our big picture attack now? We've got this data set. We've got ninety six thousand games, and we have an outcome, whether the home team won or not. So we have an outcome, but we need some features. We want to know how are we going to try to predict whether the home team won or not, and. To do this, we're gonna we're gonna start small. We're gonna start simple. We're gonna start with what we can actually get out of the data we have right here. So, how might you approach this? Well, one thing you might look at is let's just look at the hitting for now. Let's ignore the pitching. Pitching is extremely important, but let's just try to get a simple model that does better than just guessing the baseline. So so. If we had nothing, if we had no features at all, we would say, they asked you, did the home team win in this game or not? You'd just say, well, I think the home team won with probability 53.83, because I don't know anything else about the game. But obviously, if we knew some things about which team was better, then we'd be able to, to hopefully do better than that. So we want to take this data, and for each game, try to give create some features that indicate how good that team is at that particular time right so you're you're you know right you're standing right before the game starts and you've got access to everything that happened in the past and you want to be able to calculate some features in the past and use those to make a prediction of the next game so to do that we need to have each team's games in chronological order, right? So, so for example, let's say we're, we're going to ignore the individual players for now. We're just going to look at the team's hitting performance. So we want to know over the past however many games, what was the team's, you know, say batting average, their on-base percentage, their slugging percentage. And we can use that as features. And just let's just do that to start and see if if see how much that improves our predictions. So to do that, we need to wrangle our data so that we have each team's games in chronological order. And then we can use the pandas rolling functionality. So it's just a simple function in pandas to get the rolling sum in a trailing window. So we could say, we're sitting here on June 5th over the last, you know, 100 games of this team, what's their batting average? What's the team batting average? What's the team on base percentage? So forth. Um, we'll need to be a little careful because we need to make sure when we do the running values, we don't want to include the current game. We want to have it be based only on the past games. Um, so to do this, let's, let's, let's think about what this would look like. So let's try to pull out all the games for a single team. So I was a Mets fan growing up, so I'm gonna make a data frame of just the Mets. I'm gonna say, let's take where uh, df.team visitor equals equals quote NY, I think it's NY national or df.team visitors team is and so that's going to be which rows we want, and then we'll take all the columns. Let's see if that works. Okay, so df mets shape. Oh, I didn't get any rows. Um, 
Okay, so I made a slight typo there. Um, I had this parentheses in the wrong place. But now if we do it correctly, we'll see that uh, grab all the games for the Mets where they were either the visiting team or the home team. We've got 6,736 games now. Um, if we look at the first 100, we'll see that sometimes they were the home team and then sometimes they were the, uh, the visiting team. So they're either in this column or this column. So this is sort of the challenge of wrangling this data right now, right? Is that um, we'd like to take this data frame, but we kind of want to go through it and say, when the Mets were the home team, let's look at the statistics related to the home team. And when they were the visiting team, let's take the statistics related to the visiting team. So we're going to write a function that's going to grab out the Mets and pull out their hitting statistics, whether they were the home team or the visiting team. So let's go through how we're going to do that. So I start with just a helper function, which just strips out the, the suffix and defines what are the visiting columns and the home columns. And then I'm going to create this function that says, give me a team. I'm going to grab all of their visiting games, all the games where they were the visiting team. I'm going to say that they were not, it was not a home game for that team. I'm going to say who their opponent was. Their opponent was the home team in this case. And I'm going to give them all of the visiting columns. Then I'm going to do the same thing for when they're the home team. Say their opponent was the visiting team and grab all the statistics of the home columns and strip out that suffix. And then I'm going to put these two together, concatenate them, and sort by the date and the game number. So after I do that, I'll have a, a data frame with all of the team's games in order, uh, whether they were the home team or the visiting team. And then what I can do is use the pandas rolling function to quickly say, give me aggregate a particular column in the past a particular number of rows. So this win size is going to designate how many rows to look back. This raw call tells me for which column. And I'm just going to go through and, uh, and uh, create uh, column names for each of these things. So I'll have uh, roll sum for at bats uh, for the past 162 games for the past 30 games, in this case, for these two window sizes. Then after I do all that, um, I can then take ratios to get the things I really care about. So I, I, I count up how many bats they've had in the last 162 games, how many hits they've had in the last 162 games. I can then take that ratio and tell you what's this team's batting average over the last 162 games. And hopefully that'll be a good indicator of how likely they are to win this particular game, or at least it'll be an important feature. So we'll do that for batting average, for on-base percentage, for slugging, and for on-base percentage. Um, now before I do that, I want to check one thing real quick. So let me pause for a sec. Okay, got that sorted out. So let's let's run this function. Oh, and just to say a couple more things. So then at the end of all of this, I'm going to also come up with a column that I call season game. I'm just going to concatenate the number of the season with the number of the game for that team. And I'm going to set that as an index. So if I say, hey, I want to get the row for the New York Mets 27th game in 1980, I can pick out that row very quickly because it'll be the index of the Pandas data frame. So let's run this and take a look. So I created again this data frame for the New York Mets and I randomly sampled 10 rows. And you can see, so for example, for 1988, um, if we scroll all the way to the right here, we now have things like what was their batting average over the last 30 games, the on-base percentage over the last 30 games, their slugging, their on-base plus slugging, and likewise over the last 162 games. And we got this by 
aggregating over 162 games their at-bats, their hits, their other relevant statistics, and then taking the ratios to get these percentages. So this tells us that before this game, right before this game that the Mets play um, on August 6th, their 109th game of the season, here are the features we had about the Mets offense. Here's how good we think the Mets offense was. It's represented by these numbers. And so forth. So we now have this for every game of the Mets. And I could put in any team name here and get their team information. So to make this easy to look up, I'm going to now create a dictionary that says, uh, for, for a team, give me their data frame. I'm going to create all the... the I'm going to create all the team data frames ahead of time. Because next, after I do that, I'm going to go through every row of our initial data frame, all 96,000 of them, and I'm going to say, here's the home team, find their statistics before that game. Here's the visiting team, find their statistics before that game. And then I will have a data frame that, that works that does what I want to do. So let's do this. Again, I have the code already over here, so I'm going to swipe it from over here. So very simple. I'm going to copy this over to here. So just start with an empty dictionary and say for every team, I just grab the visitors teams for, for simplicity, create an entry in the dictionary that maps the team three letter abbreviation uh, to their data frame. So let that run. That's going to take a few seconds. Oh, that was quick. And now we've got it. So now the last thing we want to do is what I just described. Start with that big data frame that had all 96,000 games in it and pick out the relevant, the relevant numbers. So we're going to have four numbers about the visiting teams hitting and four numbers about the home teams here. So let's grab that out. So this is actually a fair amount of code, and, and you know, I did this in a certain way. It's probably not the most efficient way, um, but there is some method to this madness. So, so pandas does not like so much when you go in and edit cell by cell any entries. So a more efficient way to generally do something is to create an entire vector, and then just add that whole vector as a column to the pandas data frame. That tends to be more efficient than trying to add a bunch of blank columns and then filling them in one by one. Now, the downside of that is you have to have code that looks like this. And there's probably a smarter way to do this, but uh, this works for now. So I'm creating, these are going to be my new feature vectors. The batting average over the last 162 games for the home team, the batting average over the last 162 games for the visiting team, and so forth for all of these other things. So I create a bunch of blank uh, vectors that are the size I want them to be. And then I iterate through, uh, I iterate through the rows of the data frame. And what I do is I say, okay, I'm on this row of the data frame. Here's my home team. Here's my visiting team. Here's which game it is for the home team. Here's which game it is for the visiting team. Now, grab the batting average for the team data dict of that home team. And again, this probably could be cleaned up a little bit. Probably be a little quicker to uh, to to, I could make this more efficient, but, but this works for now. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pluck out each of the numbers that I want corresponding to that particular game. And so let's run this. So this will take a little bit to run, but you know, not too bad. You can see it's, it's kind of moving along there. So we'll just wait for this to go down. And there, we're done. It wasn't too bad. Um, so, uh, so now let's look at our data frame. Um, oh, I forgot one line, which is before I do that. So I created all the vectors. I did not put them into the data frame. So this is the other sort of uh, somewhat tedious thing 
with the way I've done this. Um, anyway, if somebody knows a, a if somebody has a good idea for like a, a cleaner way to do this, I'd be interested to hear it. Um, but anyway, so I created those variable names. These were just variable names. These were not in the data frame yet. So now we got to put them in the data frame. And now that makes more sense. We've got them now. And now when we look through, so now when I go to the right, you can see after all this stuff, after all the players, I've got a home victory, one or zero. And then I've got these, you know, various numbers about the home team's offense uh, and the, the visiting team's offense. And I threw in some other things too, like how many errors they committed, how many stolen bases they had, how many times caught stealing and so forth, just because it was easy to do so. So now we've got something to work with. We've got a bunch of features. They're just about the offense, so we shouldn't expect them to be that great because because pitching is really important to baseball, as, as any fan of baseball will tell you. Like the, in particular, who's the starting pitcher is a really important aspect. But we've got some features that are relevant to each game that we should be able to use to make better predictions than just predicting that the home team wins 53.8% of the time. So let's save this off. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to load up this file and build our first model and see how much better than the naive prediction we can do. So uh, again, please like, like the video and subscribe. Turn on notifications too, maybe, to, to find out when the next video is coming out. And uh, thank you very much for joining me. Next video, we will do modeling. Also want to add that uh, this notebook, I'll make this available on GitHub so that anyone can follow along with it. So I'll, I'll put the link to this notebook in the description. I'll also include some other links about where to find data and so forth. Um, so if you want to do this yourself and start building your own model at home, you can do so.